Hi, I'd like to introduce you to SDP Creator, our single touch payroll solution for classic MyHub users. In this video I'm going to cover the initial setup. The setup will vary from one user to another depending on how complex your payroll is. Today we're using a vanilla setup, an employer with a very straightforward payroll, just base hourly, PAYG, super guarantee and a car allowance for good measure. The first thing to do when you run STP Creator is to click this button, Permanent Data Set. Basically, all the settings for STP are kept in a permanent data set. Then, whenever you need to report STP, you open the Save Data Set file, load the payroll data from your company file, click a few buttons to assemble all the figures, and then lodge your report. So let's click this button. As we don't already have a data set file, Click this button here to create a new data set file. Click Browse, locate and select your company file and then click Open. We're going to use this company file. Due to ATO security requirements, in order to ensure only authorised persons have access to confidential payroll information, you must create a login for you as owner of this data set file. Enter your full name, as this will be used for a declaration, and specify a password as well as a password hint. There is no password reset feature, so make a note of these details. I just pause the video to complete these details, and once you're finished, click OK. This gives us an empty data set screen, and as you can see, we don't yet have any data from the MIB file. The next thing to do is to click this button here to load payroll data from the MIB company file. You will need to provide login information for the MIB file. In this case, there is no administrator password, so we just click OK. STP Creator then reads the relevant data from your company file. Yours may take a little longer than this did. And now you can see we have a, a serial number and a file ID. The next step is to complete the payer details. So we click this button and complete the payer information. The, the code here is something that Namich will provide you when you purchase. Remember, you only need to enter all these details once. Group ID is optional and not reported to the ATO. The recommended approach is if you have, say, two groups of employees, ones who are paid weekly and ones who are paid fortnightly, you could call one group weekly and one fortnightly. This is what we've done here. If there's a problem with your lodgement or to view history reports on singletouch.com.au, they will identify reports with this group ID. Let's click Update, and now we are ready for mapping. The first step is to select the STP fields that apply to you. Click on this button. This table shows all of the ATO specified fields. Some are compulsory and so they're already selected. For our purposes we need four fields. Gross pay, employee gross pay, employee tax, super guarantee amount, and as you can see these are all selected for us. Last of all we need car allowance as some of our re employees receive this in their pay. This gives us 21 selected fields. We can now click OK and close this screen. Next we need to map our payroll categories in MyUp to these fields. Click on this button here. At present this table is blank. We need to click this button to update data from our company file. We have to identify those payroll categories that we use and map them. Ignore the first five here as they are not used by MyUp. The first one we use is Base Hourly. So let's tick this one and then click Edit. On this screen in the Mapping field we need to select the relevant field from the drop down list. In this case Employee Gross Pay. For W1WT we need to select W1 which is gross payments. We now click OK. As you can see that's now updated the mapping. The next payroll category is 
super guarantee. Edit, super guarantee amount. This is not reported, so we put NA. Next we have PAYG withholding. Mapping is employee tax, W2. And last one is car allowance. Here we select the mapping for car allowance and W1. If unsure whether to use W1 or W2 or NA, unfortunately we can't provide tax advice. We suggest you contact your accountant or bookkeeper, the ATO or check the ATO's website. Google something like what gets recorded at W1 on an activity statement. When you've finished all the mapping, click OK and we're back to this screen. The next thing to do on this screen is to select the payees or employees. Typically your MIAB file will have more employees than the ones you currently pay. Click this button to show STP Creator which employees you want to report on for this data set file. As with the payroll categories, this table is initially empty. Select Update from Company File. You only need to do this once or when details in your MIAB file change, for example if a new employee start. Initially all employees are excluded from the STP. What we need to do is select the ones we want, in this case all of them, and then click Include in STP and you see that's changed to a yes. The last thing to do here is to run some edit checks to ensure all the data is complete. Click Check All STP Payees. This will check only those who are included. As you can see, this message indicates there were errors. Those with errors are identified with the word error in this column. And as you can see, two of our employees don't have a date of birth field. To identify the error, select each payee one at a time and click Edit. This will bring up a screen showing all the payee's details. If the error is not obvious, click the Update and Close button. And this will highlight any errors. In this case we have no date of birth and an issue with how the address is recorded in MyOB. We need to correct these things here, but it's also a good idea to make a note of these changes and update your MyOB file. This will save you having to repeat all this next time. Once we're done, click Update and Close. You'll notice this employee has now got checked here. So let's finish the other one. It's just the date of birth. Okay. When finished and the number of checked matches the number for STP, we can click Save to update all the data. We're back on this data set screen and now that we've finished we can click this Save As and Close. That's because it's a new file and hasn't already got a file name. So give the data set file a name that's going to help you identify it next time. And that is it for a vanilla setup. You'll not need to repeat any of these steps again unless you make changes to your payroll in Maya. If your payroll is more complex, see the video for a complex setup. In another video, we'll show you how to use STP Created to report your payroll to the ATO. I'm now going to close the program.